The latest regional warmongering exercise by the fundamentalist regime in Iran has again brought to full attention the moral and political imperative of blacklisting the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps of the Iran regime, also known as the IRGC, as a terrorist entity by the European Union and the United Kingdom. Western capitals accustomed to the reckless and destructive policy of appeasement are now slowly concluding that they must focus on the IRGC and its devastating conduct. They're witnessing the consequences of their flawed Iran policy. The British outlets, the Daily Telegraph, and the Mail Online have reported that the United States has insisted on Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister of England, to ban and blacklist the IRGC. Placing the IRGC on the terrorist lists of foreign countries has been one of the long-standing goals of the Iran resistance. Of course, the Iran resistance does not limit itself to blacklisting. Beyond that, it's seeking the dissolution of the IRGC and its complete elimination from Iran and the region. Article 2 of the NCRI President-elect Maryam Rajavi's 10-point plan for a democratic, secular republic in Iran, which was first announced at the Council of Europe in 2006, calls for the dissolution of the IRGC and other repressive institutions. The clerical regime's survival is built around a two-pronged strategy, absolute repression at home and relentless export of fundamentalism and terrorism abroad. And the IRGC is the central machinery for implementing this strategy. It's not enough to blacklist it, it must be disbanded. Needless to say, the dissolution of the IRGC is the task of the resistance units in Iran, which are currently relentlessly undertaking it across the country. In tandem, the European Union and the United Kingdom should immediately ban and blacklist the IRGC.